everyone. Welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Hi, everyone. Tyrion Flax has dragged himself from uh, the hangover and celebration atmosphere, the parties that are still going on in the streets. Well, hold on now. Well, hang on one second. Oh. By the time this goes out, we could be have crashed out of the tournament. Yeah. Embarrassingly. Embarrassingly. Yeah, it it right. would be embarrassing if we crashed out at this point. Yeah. Because our next game is Ukraine. Yes. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> Why is that funny? Yeah. Well, they're not the most uh, f famous footballing nation, oh, are they? Here we go. No one... How many times have they won the World Cup? How many times have we once in yeah. 1966? How many times have you won it, Lewis? Mr. Mr. Judgmental? Eh? Well, but but at the same time, there's like South American nations like Uruguay that have won the World Cup. Back right? in the 40s and 30s. Yeah, I know. But, you know, I'm just saying Uruguay, Ukraine. Which one's the scarier? I'd I'd be more scared of Uruguay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not... I honestly would be a lot a lot more fearful of a South American football team. Oh, Knowing really? nothing about football yeah. and having watched none of the games. Really, you don't know anything. Well, let's oh, let's let's find out if we if we crash out. Uh, anyway, are you feeling you are you on like cloud nine? Uh, there was I I was around on um, when the match was happening. I wasn't actually watched it because I was in the recording. Right, but <laughs> I caught the end. I like I could hear cheering out the window mm. from the local pub, you know. And I when I went walked home from the office, everyone was just dancing around in the streets, like it was like the the country had just caught fire. Yeah, um, very strange to see that the the people get so Wait, excited. Wait, a about car it. had caught fire. No, well, the, if just no, it felt like it felt like th there was this energy. I see. I've I've talked about this a lot of times because I spent um, I went on my French exchange when World Cup '96 was going on. Right. Um, oh no, France '98. Sorry, not Euro '96. France '98. And I was in France when they won the World Cup, so I was swept away wow. in the whole Where did you, city. Uh, being... Did you immediately put a beret on and some like mime <laughs> paint and, and try to fit in? Like you were like, oh man. I did have a French flag painted on my oh, forehead. You fucking scum. You Get are a um, scumbag. You're a traitor. Well, they, and felt a scumbag. Like, they felt like I had to do it in order to not, you know, not yeah. run into trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's, I fair. Was, that's I fair. I was in Lyon and they, they were like, just. Just do it, um, and they, you know, they were like, just don't, put don't, the flag on your face. Lee. Just dance around. <laughs> don't, don't let anyone know you're English. I, I like les bleus. I like les bleus. Uh, so no. So wait, was... the, the the first World Cup in 1930, oddly enough, had an odd number of teams in it. I wasn't at that one. You weren't at that one. This um, was 1930. So Group A has Argentina, Chile, France, and Mexico. Argentina won that group. That group had Yugoslavia, Brazil and Bolivia. Yugoslavia won the group. Group three had Uruguay, Romania and Peru. Uruguay won that group. And group four had the United States, Paraguay and Belgium. We weren't in the first World Cup. We didn't take part. Wow. But the United States did. And how did, did we end up taking part as England rather than the UK? So the way I understand it, the reason that we've done England, Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales, you know, all the, the, the islands are separate, is because of the, um, the, the issue is that this is why we never uh, entered a, a, a team into the Olympics until we could secure the fact that just because we play as Britain at the Olympics doesn't mean that we have to play as Britain. Because I'm pretty sure people would love it if we had to be just Britain. Like UEFA would like that, would make their life easier. Yeah. Turns five teams into one team, you know, that's a lot yeah. simpler. Um, or four teams it would be, and Ireland would obviously still be Ireland. Um, but yeah, for some reason, uh, we, we've sort of maintained that uh, separation. It means we get five cracks at it. Because yeah. uh, what is the, the Commonwealth Games uh, you have, um, is, is, it all, is it all combined again, Great Britain, in, into one? Or can, I don't know. can like Scotland and Wales like have their own... I mean, when, think about the Olympics, it's Britain. Commonwealth it? Gamers, I don't know. It, it's Team GB. Yeah. Now, what, one thing that's interesting is if you look at France... You know, I think we were talking about time zones, wasn't it, last week or the week before when we were talking about the fact that France has, like, the most time zones? We we have a lot of time zones as well. Everybody thinks it's Russia, but technically it's France because they consider all those little islands and bits of France as France. So right. if you look at the French national team, um, a lot of those players essentially come from outside, you know, their, their sort of uh, demographic, their history, if you like, is from outside. Right sort of mainland France, but they, they qualify as, as French citizens, so they play uh, well, something like Well, that. I mean, they, yeah, like, like Senegal and Algeria and stuff, right. but they have their own national teams, right? That's true. Yeah. But if you look at a lot of their best players, I mean, Kylian Mbappe, for example, Mbappe yeah. is not what I would call 
like a typical French name. It's clearly, uh, let's find out, Guyana or somewhere <laughs> like that. Let's find out where his, his origin is from. Uh, yeah, but he, I mean... Cameroon. He, he, so I his sh- father is from Cameroon. But he was born in France. He was born in Paris. And his mother is so... Algerian. Yes, but obviously Cameroon and Algeria have that sort of connection to, to France. So I think that obviously they can sort of uh, reasonably claim that uh you know they, they can they can get people from countries like i mean killing mbappe is is a phenomenal player although he did miss a crucial penalty i'm just saying it's easier for them to get a good team because <laughs> he must they can hoover he, he must be having a hard time at the moment there's always <laughs> it's always that this this these world cups and euros the history repeats itself right someone or some character does something that gets them like i know vilified yeah. for years for missing a penalty and that's that you know whether it's David Beckham like getting a red card at yeah. the World well, didn't, Cup or whatever. Uh, you know that. Didn't the uh didn't the, the current manager have like a bit of a blunder like that too? He missed a penalty. Very or famously, something. Gareth Southgate yeah. missed Gareth missed Southgate, the penalty right. at Euro ninety six, I think. There you go. I think yeah. it was at Euro ninety six that he missed. Just as he was missing that penalty, Lewis would have been wearing his beret and uh <laughs> prancing around in the in the hedgerows of France pretending that he was French to fit in with the winners. Um meanwhile back at home, a totally different story. Pretending wow. I was Michael Owen, you know, getting out there on the field, kicking kicking the ball just, in the goal, you know, just, doing yeah. all those football things. Pretending his socks um, off, yeah. His I mean, luckily, socks. <laughs> luckily for <laughs> Kylian Mbappe, there's such a dearth of strikers these days that he could miss 10 penalties in a row and no one will, no one will care. They'll still pay 120 million euros for him or whatever. Yeah. There's just no well. strikers out there. Nobody's making strikers. What do you mean? That sounds like the most mad thing to say. No, no, Isn't it's, that what it's every true. footballer wants to be? No. That's the dream. So if you look at um, the Premier League, a, a lot of teams don't have like a really good striker. Like It's a hard thing to get. It's it's just a big thing. Big clubs are struggling to get like really classic centre forwards. And when I think back to the 90s, if you look at the number of strikers there were, especially in Serie A, it, it's re- that's the Italian league, by the way. There were a ridiculous number of really, really top draw strikers, and now there just aren't. Clubs are genuinely struggling to to find really top strikers out there. So a lot of the guys that are really good are like also really old, and they're just sort of dragging themselves on because there's <laughs> no other good strikers out do you, there. Do you think it's just that the game's changed though, and you know the the nature of the way that people now defend and play and uh, no I, like... th- I think it's to do with the way that the, the young players are trained so if you there's a there's a guy called the secret footballer i think it's a secret footballer and um i've read a couple of his books and he's an ex <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd keep it secret if I was <laughs> he's, a, he's an ex pro and he sort of spills the beans on what it's like as a footballer and stuff like that and he said that you'll notice that there's a lack of certain types of player being produced because clubs all want to make midfielders because they're right. much more sellable than strikers or I defenders. See, I see. It's easy to sell midfielders. Everybody's playing with fucking five bloody midfielders these days anyway. Crank out midfielders and you can make more money from it. Like that's much easier to just crank out midfielders. That that was his claim anyway. And the thing is, if he's wrong, where are all the strikers at? That's all I'm saying. Where are all the strikers at? There is a serious lack of, of good strikers. No, yeah. Compared to the 90s. I've noticed that as well. Like, of course um, you guys have. Of course. Yeah. I, there there <laughs> I was just paying a lot of attention to football. Do you know what? I feel like such a tourist when it comes to football because um, I really enjoy the tournaments. But um, but like I don't watch the regular Premier League or anything like that, you know? It's because like, it's, it's, a lot of it is absolute shit. Right. That's what they don't tell you on the box when you purchase the Premier League. It's it's a lot of it is absolute wank, like just right. boring fucking football, plodding and just dull. Right. It's really only the some of the games that are really really exciting. A lot of it is shit. Anyone that watches the Premier League will back me up on this. I'm pretty sure that they would and say yeah, it was shit. A lot of the teams are just boring. When we played there, a lot of the time that we played, it was fucking boring. Um, half the teams in there are just fucking dull. They're all desperately just terrified, clinging on because if you get relegated, you end up where we are, Bournemouth, which is. Sad, very sad. The, a sadness culture sets into the club. Sad. You could wind up like Sunderland, <laughs> fucking yeah. Sunderland. As sad as it gets. Is, is that is that one of the most pathetic teams ever? Like <laughs> purely purely because my mate Bob is a Sunderland fan. Right. Yes. Right. Yes, they are the most pathetic team. So people, so people watch Sunderland and they're like, "This is pathetic. Like, I can't watch one more minute of this." Well, they they I'm were so a top angry. flight team for a long time. 
and then they got relegated. What a ludicrous display, like all that kind of stuff. <laughs> right, and then they got relegated again. Right. So they're, they're like in League One, which is, I mean, they're a big club. Like, you know, they're, they're a big club and the people of Sunderland are rightly pissed off. The ownership was awful for years. Uh, and they'd signed all these fucking shit players on big wages, desperate to cling on to the Premier League. And when it didn't work out, it would be like investing massively in your property and then property market tanks in your road only. And right. you keep making all these expensive adjustments to your house to attempt to improve its value. And none of them works and they all break down and it's all shit and you can never sell the house and you're desperate for the market to come back around your way. That's where Sunderland have ended up, to put it in terms that are non-footballing, I guess. Right. We talked a little bit about this before, didn't we, with the American teams buying up, American investors buying up like Wrexham and stuff. Right. Did we talk about that? Yeah, Jim, yeah, Ryan Reynolds and his mate, you know, doing it for the movie or whatever because they want to make a show I about mean, it. I that, mean, that must have made them a bit. Well, um, that's not yeah. Ryan Reynolds, to be fair. That was... Uh, that was some, what is it, Netflix or is it Prime? I can't remember. I've watched it. It, yeah. it is very sad. It's mainly people from Sunderland going, this club's been running in the fucking ground lake. It's shocking. You know? <laughs> but they just complaining. But the, actually, I can't really do, I can't do a Geordie accent as evidenced by that. That was very good. That was really was good. Well, the Sunderland yeah. accent is distinctly different and it, right. is, it is hard to nail down. It's a Uniquely, bit, distinctly it's different. It's a bit like a, a Welsh accent I find very difficult to do. Some accents are either, easier than Wheels. others. Wheels. That's uh, that's a that's yeah, the extent you go. of it for me. <laughs> Reels. Reels. Well, that, what, Reels. Is that Russian? That's so. I mean, we Reels. have this euphoria at the moment in the UK around football. For some reason, you know, it's the time when um, everyone sticks the uh, the fridge office gets like a yeah. sweepstakes well, like, going. So everyone puts a pound in. Coming back to this whole notion of enjoying the big tournaments and not so much a Premier League, Sorry, I feel yeah, like yeah. I'm not alone in that at all. There's tons of people oh, no, out there absolutely. like that, you know. But uh, but I do really get into it. Like uh, I I really it, enjoy it, watching. It, it becomes unavoidable yeah. at, at certain times of the year, and you get it's very easy to get swept up in it. Like because it's such a strange energy that yeah. everyone has. Yeah. Um, also, and, it's like a story. It's like a, a series that's long enough to enjoy, but also short enough that you can finish it. And the other you know thing I mean? about it is, is that we have it's been going every two to four years since we were born. Like, yeah. I remember when I was five and when I was nine and when I was 13, watching football with my dad right. in a pub or right. when we were on holiday, finding a place to watch the football, you know, because it was on or whatever. And I, so it, it is this weird nice like almost like that christmas morning like positive feel you know of something familiar that's that's fun and kind of different and it's yeah it's not long enough that you have to you know you're right pflex it's like a it's like you go through these sort of this idea of oh we could win this tournament or right. whatever I, I don't know when you start thinking about it like what is it you know you might win a game who cares um it doesn't yes it's, it's suddenly less you should just just it's best not to think about it. Just go with it. Um, but everyone gets wrapped up in it, and it's this strange thing, like energy that permeates people that you wouldn't necessarily think were interested yes. in it. Yeah, or or people who've got no who, who've actively showed dislike for football right. before. Yeah. Suddenly, I mean, you guys always make fun of me when I talk about oh, football, football, and all that kind of stuff. I, I mean, yeah. I don't really. I mean, that, but uh, again, football culture is uh, is is different than just enjoying the game as well. Very, right? like, very it's true. It's very derbrained. It's very derbrained. <sighs> is what I consider it to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. I was talking people. to my wife about this the other day, and. And um, it, it seems almost unique, but maybe I'm wrong because, again, I'm not super into football. So, you know, please don't get offended by me saying this. But I feel <laughs> like especially in England, for some reason, there's definitely a, um, a a kind of stereotype that like most of the like the fans are are, are thuggish. You know, there's the um, there's like the hooliganism and all that from the from the past. I don't know if it's still like a big thing now or whatever, but. And I'm sure it happens in other places, but I, I feel like at the at the forefront of a lot of that, people from outside of the UK would view English fans as like a bit more that way inclined. Would you agree with that or or no? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It feels a, a little bit unique to 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 England, especially. Like I know I have I have friends from outside of England who are like, I can't stand watching England. As much as I want to support them, I just I hate the fans. Like I, right. I don't want them to win, blah, blah, blah. Which is I is a little bit so offensive sometimes, but at the same time, I can kind of understand where they're coming from, even though I don't necessarily agree with it. You know what right. I mean? Right. 
Well, we, we obviously had a very long history, especially the 70s and 80s, of crowd trouble and hooliganism. And we exported that wholesale to Europe. And like those sort of firms, if you like, the, the hooligan firms and the idea of British hooliganism is still very popular. Um, if places like Russia and, and, uh, and stuff like that really love that. A lot of countries really, really loved the hooliganism and sort of adopted it. I mean, they made movies about it. That sort of hard man looking for a ruck and all that kind of stuff. There is a difference, though, between the fans, which is that, yes, uh, there's, there's crowd trouble in the Netherlands, there's crowd trouble in Germany, in Russia, in Italy. Sure, um, uh, of course, but I don't feel like it's as um, as sort of like intricately reported as like the, the, the sort of hooliganism that exists in, in the UK. But having right. said that, I've lived in the UK for a while and maybe you're more likely to hear about no, that no, you're in right. the UK than right. elsewhere. It, we, we, our fans were historically the, the worst for that kind this, of stuff. This stuff has been inherently very closely tied to masculinity, right? It, it does feel... I don't know, I go into, like, I was in WH Smith the other day in a train station, and I was looking at, like, the new books that are out, right? And there's so many of them which are this a, a full face pick of a bearded, good-looking guy, and it's like, my time when I was killing Iraqis. That's like the title <laughs> of the book, do you know what I mean? And then I killed some more of them. Do you know what I mean? It's like, they're the names of these books, like, How I Survived seven days in an Iraqi prison. Right. That's like, yeah. do you know what I mean? This, yeah. These are like every, and there's like hundreds of them and they're like by 10 different guys. And I'm like, who's reading this? Who is reading this stuff? I reckon it's der brains. I'm sorry. Or it's, it's women who are reading it as like man porn. They're like, <laughs> oh God, look how sexy he is. Oh, oh um, man. I'm not saying young women. That's why I think it's mums. But I, I don't think, think mums are turned on by the description of s s some guy bayoneting but... an Afghani. Like, I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I yeah, don't... No, my favourite bit was when he stuck a bayonet in his eye. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think it is. I don't know who it is. But it's not me. It's young, young men. Just... It's young men. I would feel, I, I feel uncomfortable. I would rather read, uh, on, I'd be uncomfortable reading that on the train. I would, I, me sat there, can you imagine me sat there holding, oh, holding open this book with this sort of, you know, hard S me S of all people. Me. That's what it's called or something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't know. I don't, it feels like a trap. Did you not like... read Bravo 2-0 by Andy McNabb, which actually improves with every read? <laughs> Does it? No. Well, I mean, a, the thing Alan is Alan that... Oh, <laughs> but did you not read that? It came out in the nineties, I think. I mean, that's the original one, right? Right. With um, but Andy McNabb was his real name or something, or was it? And then he... he was in the SAS. A bunch of the other lads on that mission also wrote books, and yeah, I, and they I, all I, they, they all contradicted they all... a little bit. I believe. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> which is quite it's, funny. Yes. I mean, the, the essential story is they got lost in the desert and he got captured, and it was like a fight for their life and stuff like that. You know, they got run down by. Uh, Iraqi forces so right. I, I don't know like if you read it it's very it's very very silly you know stuff like saw two would have come around us corner so I slotted they them. always me and talk I like said that. to Dave Dave grab the law rocket and Dave grabbed the law rocket and I said shoot that truck Dave and he did and it blew up <laughs> It's like that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well done, Dave. Well done, Dave. We high five. That's right. But so, yeah, you're right. There are a lot of those books. There are a lot of those books. I mean, but there's a lot of them now, and they're for Dur Brains. And I'm just thinking, like, <laughs> the other things that are for Dur Brains are, like, you know how there was, like, anti vax marches, which they're for Dur Brains? There were these guys, two guys, who went on anti vax march, and th they saw uh, Chris Whitty. Do you remember yeah, the yeah. professor? in a park and they went up to him they're like oh Chris Whitty let's get some selfies with you <laughs> um, and so oh, they sort man. of just sort of grabbed him yeah. and sort of took some pictures with him and he was like and they got arrested I think because they one sort of one of them lost his job they were young lads but yeah he lost his job he was in a state agent they were in their mid-20s I don't think that counts do you know what I mean well, they 24 were 24 like, is young Lewis I mean that's that's young I'm not it's saying, I'm not to saying know they were better. 40. Oh, of course. I'm just saying that these guys were like, I, I don't know why I expected better from the Utes, but I did. But th this guy was a 24 year old estate agent. So, right there, that should tell you everything you need to know. Uh, so, not only did he lose his job, which is a win. There's now one less estate agent in the world as well. So technically, Chris Whitty took one for the team. What well on Chris? I've never well done, had Chris. that. People come up to me and be actively yobby, though. Like, well, oh, look, no, like, no one's bullied me in the street necessarily, is what I'm saying. But what like, about that bloke that stole your chip that time? Yeah. Well, that, that wasn't... Guy? I don't think he knew that I was anyone. He, he just... 
he did no, but he didn't like. I'm oh, not you a fan. mean because you know you're not someone who recognised me? I see. In the same way, like, do you know I mean? Was it feel felt Understood. like? Understood. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think it is that common. I think most people are are fine about it. But uh, what else? Like, I, I think the other thing that's that very dirt brained is um the 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 amount of people who turned up to Clarkson's Farms farm shop that he opened. Right. So oh, of course. Clarkson's, what a money spent. Clarkson opened a farm shop in his farm in in the Cotswolds and of course there's hundreds of people blocking the road for 10 miles you know to go to it and I'm thinking anyone who drives to Clarkson's Farm farm shop you my friend are a dirt brain <laughs> um, right that's so just just so you know just just you are like it must be just a string of people who don't have a brain they, they don't they don't think about what they're doing. <laughs> why Why are you doing that? What, Don't going do to it. Clarkson's farm? Going to his farm shop on the, like, the week that the shows come out on Netflix or whatever, when it's like, or Prime, when it's like, you know, just massively talked about everywhere. It'd be like, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's like storming the White House. It's like, just... <laughs> Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's putting it. <laughs> when Trump was in charge, that was the Capitol, you know? right? That, that was the, the Capitol yeah. building. Yeah, it was largely Durbrains who did that. I, I think, think the last people to storm the White House were, were the Brits and the Canadians, right? I think. Yeah, that was... then they uh, they burnt it down. Uh, yeah. at one was it point. 18th? It was a long, long time ago. I I think America was not ago. not quite like uh, way Wall Street, uh, big army. Like you know, it wasn't they weren't quite at that stage. No, they yet, didn't. You know? they this had... was like it in Hearts of Iron Four when the the U.S. has yeah. hardly any military. Yeah, yeah, that was them. Yeah. They had like ten lads and and one boat, and they were like, "Oh, we're a country," and everyone was like, "Yeah, right." going to invade your fucking capital yeah that was pretty much what happened i think yeah. actually that is incorrect <laughs> i have done nothing else this week to talk about though i I've have got... been playing Tarkov. yes yes i was hoping you... the, the the wipe has been great flax i have a story for you about this uh most recent wipe i please uh, tell me my first game me. i jumped in um we did a a customs run with just the gear that you're given. This is my first run of the wipe, okay? I go into a building. I find a duffel bag. There's a little bit of downtime. You know, the squad is just like chatting or whatever. Look in the duffel bag. Graphics card, baby. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. First run of the wipe in a duffel bag of all places. You can't do anything with it until level 20 now, I know. So it's just going to sit in my stash. But uh, I just thought... That's a nice find. Damn. Good that's job. A good, it's a good omen. Uh, that I is think a big we're, one. We're in for a good wipe, boys. Lads. In a duffel bag, really? Yeah, I've never found one in a duffel bag before. That must it was be just part of the patch. In a duffel bag, on a couch. Have you seen the new boss, the guy with the sledgehammer? No, I have not. Me neither, too scared. Too scared. I don't even know where he uh, exists. Factory. But, so, so this Tarkov wipe is interesting because it comes bundled with a new patch. Uh, for which there are no notes whatsoever. They've left it yeah. to the community to figure out what's changed in the game. Which I actually think is excellent. I wish more... Um, I wish that would happen more often. It, it adds a bit of discoverability to the game. I mean, games nowadays and the mentality around games is that, you know, every little piece of data is, is data mined beforehand. Everybody wants to figure out how to min-max this, that, and the other. So I think it's kind of cool that they've done it. Um, maybe some people don't agree, but I, I just thought that that was kind of neat. I think yeah. it's a really cool idea. I think, I think more, I mean, I, I understand why if you're patching like Windows or... Microsoft Excel, people should need to know what's changed. Sure. But in a game, like, yeah, why not keep it more um, exciting yeah. for fans to find out? Yeah, they're going to find out, right? I yeah, mean, it takes it's... the, you know, I end up reading the, excite the patch notes and losing all my excitement by the time, you know, I'm at the end yeah. of them. Especially with Dota. God, the patch notes usually takes me like two or three hours to read through the fucking things. Yeah. Uh, are you guys using the internet without ExpressVPN? Never, no, not even one time. I like to keep my uh, data safe and I don't want the big boys to know what I'm up to. Exactly. Using the internet without a VPN is like taking a call on a public bus on speaker yeah. for everyone to hear because they know every single website you visit. You know, it doesn't matter if you're in an incognito. Your ISPs see everything you're doing and they sell it to ad companies and tech giants and they will target at you so i use expressvpn i've got it on my phone on my ipad i've got it on my um pc but you could also put it on your router if you're that way inclined yeah. to like protect your whole family it 
creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so people can't peep on your online activity. You can just fire up the app and click one button and it's very easy. Uh, I, I use ExpressVPN and I recommend you do. So yes, if you visit expressvpn.com slash Triforce today, you can get an extra three months free on a year plan. That's expressvpn.com slash Triforce. I played a couple of games this week that were good. I played Phantom Abyss. Have you heard of that? Yes. No. Yeah, a lot of people um, that I in my in look. my peer group um, are playing it. <laughs> so we're not in your peer group. Well, like no. I mean, you guys are part of my larger peer group for sure. But <laughs> larger, we're yeah. greater peer group. Big, not well, central I mean, peer I've group. got like little bubbles, peer bubbles. I would say I've got bubbles of peers. You know? I would never consider myself a peer of yours. Well, well fair mm. enough. You know what? No, be, Fine. because I'm not on the same level mm. as either of you. Like I, you're not going to be like copying me because it's not. I, I'm, I'm not. Talk about I'm not a shut peer. Up. <laughs> why would I? You, sh- I'm not going to shut up. <laughs> see, shut that, see yeah, right there. That's why you're not. I would a, never yeah. tell you to Louis, shut up. Lewis just thinks it's, that you're like a piece of gum on the bottom of his shoe. So exactly. that's why that's you'll right. never be. That's what I'm saying. A full peer. You're yeah. not peers. This game looks um, white. Phantom Abyss. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like it's, Indiana Jones, but it's like a roguelite, right? So you can like it's collect like, wits. It's like a full guysy, mirror's edgy running thing where you have to run through like a temple collecting loot. But because it's sort of the idea is it's asynchronous multiplayer. So when you die, um, you can you, your ghost is saved and your loot is saved, and someone else has to complete that temple that you just failed, and you get your stuff back. It's, it's, it feels good to do it. But is there's just not enough content at the moment, I don't think. Right. I played it for a few hours and I felt like oh, there just wasn't enough upgrades or anything interesting to do. It just, yeah. So I think it's got potential and it looks interesting if you if you like that. I know Nilesy's put like 80 hours into it or something ridiculous. I mean, right. when I say it looks wank, I mean, I didn't like the art style. I mean, it just looks a bit kind of yeah. cartoony. Yeah. I would say normally that doesn't matter, but there's definitely a couple of games where that has mattered to me. And like, you know, like I, I hate to admit it, but it can be off-putting right if the if the art style or like the feel of the game just doesn't gel with you it's it's enough to, yeah, to yeah, turn you off sure. from it, it right? does it does feel like it could be 10 years out of date on the art style but actually for gameplay wise it's very smooth and very like satisfying to like hook onto a ledge and jump up on these things and dodge the traps and like i think as you learn it a little bit like hades as you start getting like comfortable with yeah. movement and stuff it becomes like really like enjoyable to play so yeah it's one of those yeah, games like, i think where the combination of it feels good to play and really interesting game mechanics is what's going to make it like like hades i mean hades was was also like a stunning looking game as well right with like really nice sound mm. design and everything too which is often enough to get people to come back but um I, it's it's that it's a, it's the sort of like challenge modes right and i guess you get a lot of that in in phantom abyss similar to like how you would do in in hades i, I played that the last spell that you uh, you gave me a copy of oh this. yeah what do you think? It's fucking impossible. It is a hard game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I made it to to um, night three yeah. once. It starts off quite hard, but it gets easy. Quick. Yeah, I think you. Um, I think it's one of those ones where you you sort of play it, you figure out good moves or whatever, and then you apply those to your next run, and then before you know it, you're you're just sort of like. Um, there with it, like they are billions was a lot was like a, that as well. I, 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 I remember it was just a grind, right? Like it's like because every time you die, you unlock a little bit of extra something. Yes, yeah. So I, I just realized, like once that popped up, I was like, oh, it's just a grindy game. So yeah. then I realized that it was more of a just if you just sink enough time in, your lads will get more powerful. What got me was that I was like the first time I played it, it was like night one. I was like, cool, I'll cast all these spells, no problem. Didn't even get to the village. No panic in the town, whatever, no problem. And then the next night, I was like, why can't I use any of my spells? I was yeah. like, oh yeah, you get like three mana per day. Yeah, you just ran oh, out of mana. You can buy potions great. and shit, but... But I didn't realize that. Yeah, I no. I didn't realize Well, that, that, it's one of those games that you get punished for not realizing stuff, right? And then, yeah. so the next run you do, you're like, okay, now I know this, I have to... I have to change my my game plan sort of thing. Exactly. But, uh, and I, you sort of realize what is the... Like, you realize you've got to kind of pick a build yes. and stick with it and sort of max that. So things like the propagation effect or whatever, which is like, I think, fire and stuff like that, which propagates to other yeah. units. That stuff's and, really strong, actually. Right. Well, and I the multi-shot it. things yeah. and everything. I have found that melee heroes are basically useless. That's how it seems to me. Yes. Um, they feel super weak at the start because you don't have any armor. Right. But once you get armor, they're unkillable or mostly unkillable. So you can just sit them in the middle of a load of enemies and they do re- insane 
actually damaged. Right. Like a, a melee guy will be way better than any other guy, but you have to get him there with gear. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, there's some interesting... Like, like for example, there's, there's some of the weapons. Also, it's, it really varies on the weapons, right? Some of the weapons that you give, like the one-handed sword, is super, super mobile. And there's like a skill which you can get, which does... Um, so his first skill is momentum, right? So mm-hmm. the more he moves the more damage he does when he finally uses the spell. But also, if he goes below three uh, movement, he ev- ignores all armor and ignores dodge and does, like, double damage. And so all these other things. And so you combine all this together. And so, you know, when you finally get to the boss wave, you can just one-shot the boss with him, you know, because you, you use all your move, you dance boss around. Boss wave? Uh, well, yeah, there's loads of, oh. loads of different stuff. Well, and then stuff you gotta, you're to working see, your like, way up to the final wave so that your dudes can cast the last spell, the very last spell. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it looks like I'm not will... going to be dipping back into that then. Oh, now that Tarkov's oh, out, it's good. It's good. Yeah, I mean, it's with good, uh, Tarkov yeah. out, like understandable as well. But I think it's yeah, um, well. Yeah, I think it's one of those ones where, like, for me, I, I, like I played it a little bit, but I haven't gone back to it because I'm just playing other stuff, sort of thing. But I'll uh, I'll revisit it at some point, and I'm sure by then it'll have had some some pa- patches and balances and more content or whatever as well. So All of the games good. we are playing are continually developed. Yeah, of course. Well, now. that's, just, like just, that's strangely... just the industry now, isn't it? Yeah. I've been playing a game um, called The Tenants recently, okay. which is... Um... I'm guessing that you are a landlord and you have to fix up some houses. Yes, yeah. Okay. It's like a really cartoony... Um, it looks like The Sims. You know, it's that kind of isometric... And right. You, you got this big, at this now. You got a big city that you 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 start off in the slums, so you you can buy like old caravans and do them up, and you can buy old apartments, and you have to um you have to vet your potential tenants, so you have to look, do background checks on them, and you know see how <laughs> how much debt they're in and stuff. And um, part of you can you be a slum landlord? You can, yeah. Like I I, I built um I uh, like the first apartment that you're kind of given to to get you started. You, you get that, but it's not enough to make the money that you need to really uh, keep going. So you do jobs in between, which are very repetitive. You know, it's just like there's there's different categories. Some of them are better than others, but mostly it's just like, please renovate my bathroom. And, they you know, they pay you, you know, three grand for the for the pleasure. There's a there's a budget that's not coming out of your money or whatever. But it seems to take a little while to, to sort of. Uh, get enough money to to get like your next property but once you <laughs> okay. actually buy the properties you can uh you can divide them up so like uh like you know what should just be a flat for like one or two people i've made into a flat for like six people Eight. <laughs> <laughs> and you it's just like you know you make I'd little like prison cells with inflatable mattresses <laughs> on the ground and just pack them in you can kind of trick them into paying a lot more rent as well like you do like you negotiate the fee that they're going to pay. And if you just go like really high, they'll come in, you know, on the low end of that. And then you just adjust the slider down a little bit and they'll always sort of creep up to meet you in the middle. <laughs> it's really oh, good. Yeah. So you end up oh, getting like quite a bit of money for, oh man, that's <laughs> the accommodation. It's like running a private prison Pretty or much, like yeah. something like that's, this is how the industry okay. works. It feels, it feels like a fun game. Parts of it maybe feel a bit rough around the edges. I don't know. I can't like really put my finger on it, but it, it doesn't feel done. You know, like it feels like it needs to be balanced out a little bit more maybe some more more content and stuff i don't know but um again it like every game now right they come out and you you're just like yeah this is cool but i can't wait for them to make it better like it feels yeah. like every game is like that right now. yeah it does it does feel i mean obviously we um we've definitely spoken about early access and that sort of model before i don't know um i don't know if there's a way around it for small studios people's expectations for games and the features and how it looks and how it plays and and all that is quite high. Yeah. Um, so if you are a smaller studio, how are you meant to get this game out without going through a big publisher and getting them to okay it? Which is like a, I feel like there's two ways that this can go. You can either have early access where the customers are the guardian of what makes it through and what doesn't essentially because the shit early access games drop off Yeah. because people go, this is garbage and they don't want it. Uh, but at least they're making the call the other version is a gatekeeper of a publishing studio who goes, no, we're not going to okay this concept. And then you never get the game. And for some people, a lot of those games, those more niche games, are, are exactly what they want. I mean, I'm thinking of, say, say Battle Brothers, which was early access and all the rest of it and, and was fairly limited early on. If people hadn't supported that, would it have got made? Would expansions have been made eventually and stuff like that? I doubt it. 
it's frustrating, but I think it, it allows the customers to be the gatekeepers. The The problem is that essentially you have to be a gatekeeper by spending money, which is the yeah. downside. So you yeah. buy a game that is essentially, you have to like the look of it first, they have to yeah, show off. You're kind of so, constantly investing in it to, to keep right. it going sort of thing. It's it's a There's a weird sort of like, uh, it's almost not like a balancing act, but like you'll, you'll have a, a mix of games where it's like, um, it'll come out and it'll be bare bones and then it's sort of released, but it's early access and you'll get regular sort of like content added to it. But right. what's come out is, is pretty solid. Right. And, and it's just, you're just waiting for content and maybe that takes like, you know, three years for them to do that or, or yeah. something. And, and then the dev team isn't just completely like, you know, burnt out working on the same thing. And the, the design I mean, RimWorld, well. dude, RimWorld is like a prime example of that. Think how long that was around for. I was yeah. playing that when it first came a out. A long time, yeah. A very long time ago, like a lot of other people. And yeah. he, the fact that he was able to stick with it and keep going well, was yeah. because of that. So and Factorio too, yeah. Yeah, That's Factorio. I, I played one today called, uh, not today, sorry, but uh, last week called Captain of Industry, which is kind of like a mix of oh, yeah, um, I saw that. A yeah. Factorio, a Factorio and a couple of other things. And it's, it's quite good, but... Again, it the, you know a lot of it's not done, um, and from what I understand, the guys who are working on it, I think there's two guys that have been working on it. They've done a really good job, but they've been working on it for six years, and you got to think, yeah, that's like, crazy, man. If I was working on something for six years straight, I would be really sick of working on the same thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it feels like maybe like they're doing a Kickstarter now, which I'm presuming is because they want to keep working on it, sure, and maybe they're just you know they don't have the the means to to carry on working on it, or they want to you know, bulk things up so that they can get more people in to help work on it and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. It, it feels like it, it's it's hard to get a Kickstarter going when you have nothing to show for it. Yeah. Um. So, you know, it makes sense for them to do the Kickstarter now because they actually have a game that's playable and is enjoyable. Right. And you can understand that people would uh, Kickstart it at this point. But it's like it's it just seems like all backwards somehow. You know what I mean? It's like the Kickstarter is coming in after six years of development when you just. But think, I assume that development was essentially in their spare time. I mean, you couldn't spend um, yeah, I'm six assuming, years I'm developing assuming, a game. Yeah. No, I mean, like, for a start, that's you'd have like to have six years insane. worth of salary saved right. up, ready to go, unless you have right. something on the side or. You know, you're just you just happen to be like extremely wealthy and you've just decided to spend six years doing that or whatever. I don't know right. like what the situation is, but yeah, it's a it's a weird one. But um, but I yeah, I hope I hope they I hope they do pull it off because it, it does seem like a cool game. Oh, um, closed, but, closed alpha. Yeah. September. Oh, no, you're even earlier. Than yeah, that. it's like pre alpha. What's what's pre alpha? Yeah, well, it's like the it's a dev build, basically. But the, the, right. the version I played is is pretty solid like it's you know it didn't okay. crash there wasn't really any bugs or whatever but you know like the tech tree looks awesome there's tons of stuff but you quickly get to the point where it just doesn't progress because it's like there's a lot of placeholder stuff in it you know like, right right yeah wow well I, I mean they're not i think you're the only person with this build apparently because you can't even get it on the kickstarter that i can see yeah no i think there's a couple of other influencers that have had it because i only found out about it from watching youtube videos so influencer is that what you consider yourself oh, yeah 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 influencer influencer i mean i i don't know if i necessarily consider myself that flex but that's just what they call people who do the stuff that we I'm do just, so. do you take pictures of your yourself in front of like uh famous landmarks very influential Instagram pictures of myself yeah um... <laughs> do you well all right so here's something i've noticed do you when you start your stream are you always holding up a certain kind of drink <laughs> which yeah. i've seen a lot of people doing <laughs> on tiktok and stuff like the tiktok's about to start and they're like oh let me just take a sip of my dasani water like, mm, <laughs> no i don't uh, <laughs> i don't think in, i don't dude. think um i don't think real companies uh would like me at all so um no unfortunately <laughs> i haven't had the uh, opportunity to um to promote their uh, dumb drinks i really? might get a vape sponsorship it's potential there's potential there you there. go there's potential there you there. go that's the only thing i could ever realistically be sponsored by cider cider or and vape. vaping Hey, um, slightly off off the topic of this, but um, I was looking at my tomato plant this morning, and mm. guess what? Little tomatoes? Little tomatoes, baby. Oh. Oh, I can't wait for them to turn into big tomatoes and try them out. It's, it's really exciting. Holy crap. Oh, man. God, They're going to be so good. Man, I really enjoyed the old gardening. It's been nice. My, uh, my potatoes are flowering now as well, so apparently... The the flowers will come up, they'll start to die and drop off, and then the 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 sort of like leafy like 
tube bits that come out of the ground will also start to shrivel up and die. And once they start doing that, that's when the potatoes are fully grown and ready to go. So be eating some potatoes that I grew in um, in buckets. Potatoes and tomatoes. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm excited to find out what you're gonna what it's gonna be what it's gonna be like, honestly. But harvesting um, it. Yeah, well, I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to the whole story. Of, Man, of I've the, learned so much. Like I, I know. Make sure you keep notes. Next next season, uh, I'm gonna do some more, but I'm gonna be much more organized and not just have like a bunch of crap everywhere. You know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna plan it out better and stuff. But because I know what I'm doing now. The, so you, this was like the tutorial. This was level yeah. For this a I went into this with <laughs> like with no plan right. whatsoever. <laughs> learned as much as I could just from like reading stuff and wa watching like you know stuff on YouTube or whatever. And I, I feel like I have a, a fairly good knowledge and stuff now. So next year, I'm going to get like some better equipment, organize it a lot better and stuff. And uh, I think it's going to be great. But man, this year has been super fun. Like just watching some stuff grow, some stuff not. Like you, you, like you just learn so much. It's crazy. What do, you, what do you guys think about Ivanka Trump? I think she's really hot. Um. <laughs> right. Right. Where does this come from? <laughs> I just it uh, just popped up on the newsfeed. I mean, I, I've really I've really fancied her for some time. I can't but, uh, I can't not see Donald Trump when I look at her. Like they look, you, nah. you she looks like his daughter, and I find she's that tremendously off putting. Honestly, she's a really attractive woman. I mean, I, but you she's know, only gonna look more and more like Trump. Yeah, as she is. Yeah, well. and she kind of <laughs> acts like him in some ways as well, which is also well. It would only be a short term and, thing. I don't know. It would only it? be a short term <laughs> thing. You know. Right, just, a, right. what, just a few yeah. weeks of, of, of wild passion. We would avoid talking about politics, obviously. Oh my god! But you know, I reckon that'd be a wild ride. Yeah, but I, I you can't, you can't just, you can't live like this anymore, P. Facts. No. You can't live so recklessly. <laughs> you <laughs> That's gotta... right. I've got to rain down my my Playboy lifestyle has run its course. Of all the hot uh, babes out there as well, like why, why, you know, why? Yeah, but I, I don't think I could get them. I'm thinking, have you seen her husband? Like, I reckon I could compete. I'm, I, there. I'm not being funny, Flax, but I don't think you get her either. I don't, I don't see how this is even part I think of the a argument. Chance. No, there's none. Honestly, All but... right, well, here's why I think there is. If her, her father, in my opinion, is very corrupt. Okay. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I reckon I could corrupt her a little bit. Right. right. Oh my god, are you this saying it's in. like um it's like pickup artists target women with tattoos because <laughs> that that's that speaks to a personality that's impetuous <laughs> and Jared is like my body type. She's basically married to me right now yeah. and you're going to come in as like some SAS hard man. <laughs> oh, um, that's that's my angle. I'm going to yeah. pretend to be an SAS hard man. I scaved in the ruins of factory <laughs> for 3 hours. <laughs> and I got seven graphics cards. Um, have you ever killed anyone? Yeah, I killed a lad called Sturman. <laughs> <laughs> Kill a guy called Gluhar and all his mates Everybody killed him. Nobody believes yeah. you. Nobody's played Tarkov in the real world, so they all believe. Wow, this guy seems like the real deal. Did you hear? He killed this guy called Sturman. This sounds like a bad guy. I got a Bitcoin miner in my basement, and I've got four bitcoins today. Exactly. Got a special magical treasure box in my, in my basement too. My leg had been shot off, so I'd stab some proper towel in it. Stuck a bandage on it and a splint, net some painkillers and legged it to the extract. <laughs> Did you really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. I've got three books on the bestsellers list of W.H. Smith. <laughs> she, she's saying. She probably yeah, and that. the whole time I had a can of coffee beans shoved in my ass. So what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> God, that's like that's like smuggling cocaine. Imagine if that pierced and like how much of a how much of a caffeine high you'd get from like an infusion of Isn't that, that a man. thing? Like a coffee enema and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you can get do coffee that, enemas. Right? I that think. can probably hurt I'm not, you. I'm not that I've ever had one before, but I I've heard Does of Starbucks them. Isn't offer there them? A caffeine poisoning? How much do you have to have? Oh, probably a fair old bit. It's really mm -hmm. bad for your heart. Is a ca uh. Google is a caffeine enema safe? To have caffeine, caffeine enema safe. Okay, well I'm glad I'm ruining my search. And Amazon is gonna, my Alexa's gonna ask me when I get home. It's like you have one notification: buy coffee beans. Yeah, like, oh, buy no. an enema kit, and then tomorrow buy coffee beans that just just gently moving you is towards it time them. to refill your coffee enema is <laughs> this is from a website talking about caffeine addiction and it gives all these things about like treatment and symptoms and at the end it says prevention to prevent a caffeine overdose avoid consuming excessive amounts of caffeine like that's essentially the only way you're realistically going to get a caffeine overdose is by just necking coffees 
endlessly. So really the summary of how not to get it is don't drink so much fucking coffee. Um, I just I want to mention to you guys as well, again, uh, totally off topic. Today's uh, is quite a special day. It happens to be it's the usual weekday that we record this uh, podcast. And I know Lewis doesn't like us like saying what day it is for whatever reason. Yeah, but no, it, that. no, we've always been public about this. No, today. Yeah. Today is actually fully and officially Canada Day. What a what a oh, what a day it? to oh, celebrate! Congratulations, yeah, Canada! Thanks so much. I'll take. I'll I'll say congrat. I'll say thank you, like on behalf yeah. of all my fellow um, Canucistanis. But um, yeah, no, Canada Day is good fun. Like they like when I was a kid, we used to go downtown to like watch fireworks and 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 have a couple of beers and stuff like that. But it was always really fun because you could uh, public transportation. They just stopped policing that day. So you could always smoke and drink on the bus and stuff like on your way down and everything. It was just a really fun, fun party day. You know, I, I, I miss mm. it. Honestly, I do wish you, I do you, do you have, do you have like Montreal smoked meat or like fucking some butter tarts or like what, like a, as a special a, treat on Canada day. Yeah. No, you just have a like barbecue a- and drink some beers. Like it's really straightforward, you know? It's July, so it's usually really hot. So find somebody who has a pool, go and uh, oh, God. live at their house Did for the day and have a barbecue. The hottest day, yeah, in Canada, yeah. In, yes. in in BC, it was like forty nine degrees or something at one point. It's insane. Uh, what what the fuck? Yeah. Um. And how, apparently, if it way? got any hotter, it would have evaporated all the come out of all the men's balls. Like uh, <laughs> it was so close <laughs> to getting to that point. Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, it's like I think what? it's like fifty five degrees, and like your your cum and just like disappears or something. I don't. I know. I think it just kills your sperm. Just kills all what your cum. You? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do all right. Canada, uh, do you do you not Can- realize that there's a reason your nuts retract and release? Oh my yeah. god! It's because if your body heat is too hot, your, your balls hang low to get away they from used your to body. Say as well, like if you were a laptop user, not to actually put it on your lap because yeah. it'll heat your balls up way too much. You'll kill your you boys. Just kill, kill all your, your boys. boys. I was, uh, and if it's freezing I've never been cold, overly worried inside. about that. And it turns out I had nothing to be worried about because um, my guys work. Yeah. So, so a town yeah. in British Columbia. Yeah. So what's that? The northwest, right? That's where Vancouver. Yeah, northwest. Is. Yeah, like west, 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 west coast of Canada. It reached forty nine point six degrees. Uh, that's C. insane, right? Like I would be dead. Yeah, I'd it's actually crazy. die in. And people did die in that heat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, apparently, like, literally it caused a, a it's apparently a, a phenomenon called a heat dome that traps hot air and doesn't allow other weather systems to move in. A dome? And everything that's, and it's caught with a dome, yeah. It's, it's caused a wildfire. Like, I'm just amazed that this happened in Canada. Yeah. Well, do, 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 at the same mean? time, it's just the, it's the Earth's natural way of regulating itself. I mean, uh, there's nothing like to worry about. We don't have to change anything or, or be worried or, or anything. It's just the natural thing that okay. the Earth does. So don't worry. Okay. I well, think 12 people died. Yeah. Of hyperthermia. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Which is Hypo. like when it gets too hot, yeah. obviously. Well, no, apparently there's been a minimum of 486 sudden and unexpected deaths over really? the Well, there would be. Uh, that is st- way too hot. Like, I remember it hit 35 here one year, and I was on my way out. I thought I was like, I felt like I was just... <laughs> about to die <laughs> just it kill was me so you wanted to die just unbearably Ugh. warm everywhere i went and i just could not handle it like it was it was the worst so 49 degrees i can't imagine it would feel like being in a sauna times 10 i guess like it's just it must be so must uncomfortable be ridiculous. like yeah. it's like it's, it's not it doesn't get that hot in the 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 deserts around sort of you know saudi arabia and stuff does it yeah. like i mean i know some places like ethiopia some of the hottest countries on earth are in that sort of equatorial Africa and Middle Eastern region, right? Yeah. And it's they they routinely live with very high temperatures, but I think fifty is is exceptional, um, even for them. Yeah, um, yeah, it's insane. I don't. I wonder what the highest ever recorded temperature anywhere is. It's got to be. That's got to be up there. I think right? it's in death. I think it's in Death Valley. Oh right. Oh god. Highest temperature no, in world. Appropriately named. So the highest was fifty six point seven degrees. Oh, that's a scorcher. And it was from ninth. I think. In Furnace Creek Ranch. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Furnace Creek. Furnace Creek. Wow. So wait, it says here. Hold on a sec. Two thousand eleven. 84 degrees no. in Port Su- in Port Sudan no way. was reportedly taken yeah in Sudan 84 degrees uh, what yeah 
That's what it says on Wikipedia. These are unverified claims. Right, right. 84. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's insane. that is insane, right? Like, that's, you, you, you would, you be, you would be scalded, like, going outside but, instantly, uh, right? There's a, there's a higher one. 86.7 in Iran, which was uh, a heat burst. Oh my God. But in, uh, in July of 1972, a temperature of 93.9 degrees was recorded in Furnace Creek Ranch. Jesus. Where is this coming from? So that, that's, that's, that's fucking Valley. insane. That's in like, that's just insane. Yeah. So the creek would just start to boil, like, uh, soon, right? It would like, be, you would be close to boiling. I mean, I, I think going off. outside, going outside would be, I mean, you know, when you, uh, when you open an oven, you get that wave of heat. Yeah. Uh, it's it very be, unpleasant. It would be insane. I mean, you, you would, I would presume that the moment you were outside, you would sweat immediately and profusely. Like every, all the vegetation would be cooking as well, right? Like, it would and you've just got to be... walk on that ground. Your shoes are going to melt. Oh my god! Like straight away. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Who gosh, lives there? A heat, I, a heat burst. That's a nightmare. Like all I can't... the little insects are just oh, going to yeah. shrivel Dropping up. Dropping dead. The yeah. Birds would land and just keel over. Yeah. Oh my god! You could go to to this furnace creek there's a there's a thing called the oasis at death valley which is <laughs> yeah. a luxury resort oh my god where you can just like, be incredibly hot Jesus. on holiday i mean, normally i am incredibly hot like when i'm on holiday um but that's more <laughs> of like a like a fashion related thing but yeah, yeah god that doesn't sound nice at all i hate I, I hate very cold and I hate very hot as well, equally in equal measures. We meshes. actually have a, a borax museum at the um, at the Death Valley Oasis. Wow, wow, we wow. It has a, a museum that features borax mining tools. Oh, borax also. And uh, equipment from the Pacific Coast Borax Company. Mm. Uh, there's some models of 20 mule team wagon trains. Interesting. And borax. some mineral mineral specimens. Very interesting, yeah. Do you know what borax is? Yes, yeah, sodium borate. <laughs> yes. Correct. It's used uh, in like um, refining like materials like silver, like um, metals. Right. So it put says it in here, stuff. household laundry and cleaning products. Yeah. Oh, well, that too. Yeah, it's a, sure. a pH buffer, a co-complexing agent, which I've been crying out for. <laughs> Man. <Jeez. laughs> Water, uh, water softening to... agent, flux, whatever that is, small scale gold mining. Oh, the fl and flux, that's what I meant. Yeah, it's used in the ma manufacturing of flubber. Oh, of course, it is. What a rubber poly polymer, sometimes called slime, flubber. Flubber's not real, it is, is it? It is now. Flubber, named from the film The Absent Minded Professor, glorp, glurch, or slime, a common name referred to a rubbery polymer formed by cross linking of polyvinyl alcohol with a boron compound. Jesus. There you yes. go. You can make it. There's a picture of a lad holding flubber. It's a real oh, thing. Oh, no, it's silly putty, we call silly it. Silly putty, yeah. Flubber yeah. is a, no, flubber is a non Newtonian Why fluid. Why does silly putty have that? Um, you, you, you get like the little pockets of air and they snap, you know, when, you, yeah, when yeah. you're like. Well, it's like a, it's almost it, like a plastic, it. isn't it? Yeah. It's like a plastic. I think I had it when I was a kid. I remember you could you could roll it flat and press it onto a comic. And when you lifted it up, it had the print of the that comic. That was piracy. Comic. You shouldn't. Have, that was piracy. You Sorry, have that, that was that was 1983 piracy. You wouldn't that steal was... a comic with silly putty. <laughs> well, it was reversed because it was it was backwards. It was. Yeah, then you could get a mirror and you could. <laughs> That's right. Could but I, I would it. have to own the comic first to do it. So it's in my mind, it's just a backup. It's fine. I've made a backup. Yeah. I'll, I'll also say off. my silly putty was eventually taken away from me and disposed of because I left it on an armchair and my dad sat on it and he was not happy. He had silly silly putty stuck to his ass. Yeah, I think it probably does like a greasy stain, doesn't it? And uh... I had one of those classic pop guns. Did you have one of those like that shoots a cork out of the yeah, end? Yeah, yeah. I had one of those where you cocked it like a Winchester rifle and put the cork in the end and shot it. And I remember one day all the corks went missing. And I was like, I can't find any of the corks. My gun and my parents were like, no, I'll keep looking, they'll turn up. Looking back now. They fucking threw those away. I would have done the same thing. I was shooting that thing oh all God. the time. It was it was a real awakening for me. That was when I first knew I wanted to join the SAS. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you the ones that we threw out. I don't know if your kids have had these flax, but you know, like those fucking like they're like slimy hands on a on like a slimy string, and you whip them at the wall, and they oh and those they, things are amazing. They stick. Man, they leave so much grease behind, though, we oh, had to yeah, chuck them do. all out. Like, there's just yeah, big disgusting. grease splodges all over the walls and stuff from... Yeah. Gross. The worst. My kids make stuff at school sometimes. When they were younger, they would make slime yeah. at school, which is like some weird flowery... I don't know how they've done it, but it's yeah, some they make thing. their it's, own, it's like making flour. They make their own um, Play-Doh at school usually as well with, like, right. flour and they shit. They bring it home. Yeah. 
And they're like, I've got this new Play-Doh I made. And I take one look at it and I think, as soon as your back is turned, this shit's going right in the bin because this oh, is yeah. a fucking nightmare. Yeah. That's a good parenting tip generally, actually. Like, don't don't throw be afraid to just chuck stuff out. Like, uh, If in doubt, throw it out. Most of the time, like with kids, in my experience, the excitement is contained to like the moment they're doing it. But they don't they won't think about it again after that. Right. So like, yeah, same yeah. with like these like sticky hands or whatever. They got them and they liked them at the time. But then the minute they put them down and move on to something else, you could just it's chuck gone. them out. They will never come back to them unless they're just sitting there and they, they catch their attention. But if you chuck them out, like they won't ask for them. And if they do, just say, oh, I must have put them in the attic or something. <laughs> just like <laughs> just like fob them off of it. <laughs> Luckily now, because of the dog, I've got a ready-made excuse. I can just say, look, I'm sorry, kids. We're going to have to throw this away because if the dog ate it, she'd get really sick, which is true. Yeah. And they'd be like, but I won't leave it on the floor. I was like, come on. You know, at some point she's going to get it. And they're like, okay. And they throw yeah, it away. It's, that dog It's, re- it's really helpful. good when you get to the point where you can kind of reason with your, your kids. When yeah. you can... Yeah, when you've got someone else to blame for when you've got when you've got scapegoat, yeah. that's what it is. The other one that yeah. we use a lot as well is like uh, when they were smaller. Like it doesn't work now, but when they were smaller, say you're like out in public or whatever, and your kid is like trying to climb up some stairs that they shouldn't be, or like doing you know touching stuff that they shouldn't be or whatever. Our favorite one was like, oh, oh, the lady's watching. The lady's going to come over and, and tell you to stop. And that was always enough for my kids to be like, oh, my God, who is this lady? <laughs> what is she? What, how dare she even uh, come near me? I'm, I better stop doing this. Like it was, uh, it was like such a good deterrent. The lady. So the lady. that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. That's, uh, that's, that's a good podcast. Thank you guys for joining us. You can follow Triforce on Spotify to get new episodes as soon as they come out every Wednesday. Until next week, hope you guys hope we're still in the football. And uh, yeah, why not? Why not treat yourself to W. H. Smith? Get yourself a little book, yeah, with a bearded man on the cover. Why not? Just see what's all the fuss why is the about. Hell not? Um, <laughs> just engage in some escapism with uh, some some hard man. Drive down to Clarkson's Farm Shop and uh, buy buy some shit as well. Why not? Uh, yeah, do that. You know? Thanks everyone. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.